The bravery of the US forces jumping into hell and coming back alive is all too well known. However, this video is a harrowing tale of a mortal combat which did not end well. What happened on the 4th of October 2017 in Niger, West Africa? What is the story of the Tongo Tongo ambush? Watch ahead to know. On October 4th, 2017, a convoy of eight heavily armed pickup trucks set out from the village of Tongo Tongo in Niger, West Africa. The convoy consisted of US Special Forces and African soldiers on a mission to capture Dundu Shefu, a high-ranking ISIS leader in the region. However, their operation took a devastating turn when they were unexpectedly ambushed, leaving the Special Forces to fend for their lives and becoming the hunted themselves. This tragic incident where the Green Berets fought for survival in hostile territory later became known as the deadly Tongo Tongo ambush. Immediately after the convoy departed from the village, it encountered enemy fire from a well-prepared ambush. The attackers started with sporadic shots, but as the convoy entered a small forest, the intensity of the fire increased significantly. In response, the soldiers quickly reacted, halting their vehicles and dismounting while providing cover fire. The Green Beret team leader took charge, forming a squad with four Nigerian soldiers to confront the enemy forces head-on. In a skilled and swift operation, they neutralized four insurgents, defending themselves and retaliating against the ambushers. The soldiers fought valiantly for their lives in the face of this unexpected and deadly attack. After successfully neutralizing the initial threat, the soldiers soon realized that a much larger enemy force was advancing towards them. Close to 100 armed enemies, riding motorcycles and driving pickup trucks equipped with heavy weapons were rapidly approaching. The team leader quickly assessed the danger and ordered his soldiers to withdraw from the area as swiftly as possible. However, due to the scattered positions of the forces, the withdrawal became delayed and disorganized. As a result, three Green Berets, Brian Black, Jeremiah Johnson, and Dustin Wright, found themselves separated from their comrades and left alone in the battlefield. The situation was dire as they faced overwhelming odds with no heavy weapons or air support available to assist them. Despite the grave danger, they were determined to fight and survive against the enemy forces, closing in on them. Following the fire and move principle, the Green Berets attempted to disengage from the enemy, but the IS fighters proved too swift and numerous. Despite their accurate defensive fire, the enemy steadily closed in on them, gaining, gaining ground and mounting effective attacks. Tragically, Brian Black was the first soldier to fall, sacrificing himself while providing covering fire for his comrades. Johnson and Wright fought back valiantly, but the overwhelming enemy presence threatened to overrun them. In a heart-wrenching decision, they left Black behind and attempted to escape, but Johnson was soon hit and fell to the ground severely wounded. Despite having a chance to flee to safety, Wright, chase, Wright chose to stand by his wounded brother in arms. He bravely defended Johnson as bullets rained down around them. Refusing to abandon his comrade, Wright fought courageously until he too was struck severely and was struck and severely injured. The selfless actions of these three Green Berets in the face of overwhelming odds demonstrated the unwavering bond and dedication they had to one another. According to the Geneva Conventions, wounded and wounded and incapacitated individuals or those under protection must be treated with care. In the video footage, Johnson was clearly immobile on the ground and unable to wield a weapon. Despite these protections, the IS fighters who disregarded the Geneva Convention and showed no regard for humanitarian aspects in warfare, approached Johnson and his fellow wounded soldier, executing them with multiple close-range shots. Staff Sergeant LeDavid Johnson was the fourth American soldier killed during the Tongo Tongo ambush. After the remaining American and African soldiers managed to disengage from the enemy, they regrouped about 700 yards south of the attack site. Once they realized they had left three comrades behind, they attempted to contact the squad via radio. Despite their efforts to contact the stranded soldiers, they received no response. Undeterred, four Green Berets bravely volunteered to return to the dangerous battlefield and search for their comrades. Once the rescue squad set out, they found themselves under enemy fire once more. Johnson courageously returned fire using a mounted machine gun on the vehicles. When the ammunition ran out, he continued to engage the enemy with a sniper rifle. However, as the enemy closed in again, the team leader made the difficult decision to order another evasion maneuver. The vehicles swiftly moved away at top speed, desperately trying to escape the barrage of enemy bullets. As the convoy sped away, Johnson and two of the African soldiers found themselves left behind, intending to catch up later. However, the enemy's fire intensified, preventing Johnson from entering his truck, which faced the enemy. 
With no other option, the three soldiers abandoned their vehicles and ran on foot across the savannah, hoping to escape the pursuing insurgents. The enemy quickly caught up, and the African soldiers were killed about 400 yards into their escape. Johnson, fueled by his exceptional stamina from rigorous training, managed to run almost a mile before finding refuge behind a small bush. It was there that he took this final stand, facing the enemy with unwavering courage. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, Johnson fiercely fought off numerous enemies, successfully holding them at bay initially. Armed with only his assault rifle and lacking heavy weapons, he was isolated without any radio or phone connection to his comrades. However, this dedicated family man refused to give up, relentlessly returning fire. Tragically, when the insurgents closed the distance to within 100 yards in an armed vehicle, they unleashed a hail of bullets that ultimately took Johnson's life. He died courageously, alone, with a gun in his hand, having endured a total of 18 gunshot wounds. His unwavering determination and bravery in the face of overwhelming odds are a testament to the selfless sacrifice made by soldiers like him. It took two days to locate and recover Johnson's body. The brave soldier left behind a pregnant wife, a daughter, and a son, leaving his family devastated by his untimely death. During the Tongo Tongo ambush, Michael Parasini and Brent Bartles served as the leaders, overseeing not only their American comrades, but also coordinating with the African soldiers. They had expressed concerns about the operation before the ambush as they lacked heavy weapons and air support, making the mission even riskier and more challenging. Despite their leadership, the deadly outcome of the ambush demonstrated the perilous nature of their mission in a hostile and unforgiving environment. Despite being in the field for an extended period and in dire need of rest and supplies, the higher leadership pushed them to continue the search for the IS leader. The Green Berets and their allies faced continuous enemy fire and had to evade twice to avoid being trapped. The pursuers were heavily armed Islamists and, with most of the African forces having fled, only seven soldiers remained in the vehicle. They were closely followed by several enemy trucks during the intense chase, resulting in five of the soldiers sustaining gunshot wounds. The situation was dire, and the odds were stacked against them as they fought desperately to survive the deadly Tongo Tongo ambush. Amidst the intense chase, one African soldier was killed, and the driver sustained an elbow wound but persevered, ignoring the pain to keep driving. The Special Forces team leader was also hit hard, falling off the truck bed, necessitating a risky turn back to retrieve him. As they continued to evade, they reunited with the four Green Berets who had previously separated to search for the comrades left behind. However, the enemy forces still vastly outnumbered them and possessed motorcycles, armed vehicles, and mortars which they used to attack the American team leaders and their remaining comrades. The situation remained dire with the odds heavily stacked against them as they fought for survival in the face of overwhelming enemy forces. Surrounded from nearly all sides, the special forces sent a final radio message acknowledging their imminent overrun. In a last-ditch effort, they destroyed radios and sensitive information, bidding farewell to their loved ones via text message. In their desperate texts, Parazzini pleaded for help, realizing that without immediate assistance, their fate was grim. However, their messages via the military version of iMessenger were not delivered. Upon learning of their comrades' dire situation, other special forces stationed in Africa desperately sought permission to provide aid. One group of Green Berets took matters into their own hands, boarding a helicopter without waiting for orders and flying to the attack site. Regrettably, they had to turn back, unable to reach the embattled team in time. The situation grew increasingly desperate as the odds of rescue seemed to diminish. After about an hour, only one French commando arrived, accompanied by air support. They provided much needed reinforcement, but the rescue came too late for some. In total, four Green Berets and four African soldiers were killed during the Tongo Tongo ambush, along with a translator who had been working for the military. For their exceptional bravery and camaraderie, the fallen soldiers were posthumously awarded Medals of Valor. Dustin Wright and David Johnson were honored with the Silver Star, while Brian Black and Jeremiah Johnson received the Bronze Star. The African soldiers also received recognition for their actions during the ambush. Two Nigerians were awarded Bronze Stars for their courageous efforts, with one assisting in a successful flanking maneuver, and the other voluntarily exposing himself to friendly fire to warn his comrades of their mistake. The funeral of the fallen soldiers was attended by thousands, a testament to the deep sense of brotherhood shared by those who serve in such dangerous and challenging missions. The bond formed among soldiers in situations like the Tongo Tongo ambush is unique and incomprehensible to those who have not experienced it firsthand.